Hi everyone, Lewis here, and today I am going to be making a short preview and overview of a game called The Wall Z. So I'm not going to be going into too much depth on The Wall Z, just rather focusing on the kind of key points which have been established and sharing them with you guys, as I know a lot of people who have been playing DayZ may not have even heard of this game, and it does look like something which could be pretty cool if it is done well. It is of course competition to Daisy, and many people say it's a Daisy ripoff, but I'm going to be talking about why it's different and comparing it a lot with Daisy as it is somewhat similar of a game, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so the War Z claims to be the world's first survival MMO zombie game, and you might be thinking, how on earth is it an MMO? It really depends on your opinion on what makes a game an MMO. The minimum amount of slots on any The War Z server is 70 and the maximum is 250, which compared to the DayZ mod in its current state is a massive difference as you might find the minimum on a server on DayZ is around about 40 and the maximum to be around about 80 until it starts getting unstable. Of course this will change once DayZ goes standalone but since that isn't happening for quite a while I am simply going to be comparing it to the actual features of the DayZ mod rather than the DayZ game. So the War Z is being developed by Hammer Point Interactive, you've probably never heard of them before since we haven't actually shipped a single title as of yet, but their developers have made games such as Call of Duty Black Ops, League of Legends, World of Tanks, Guitar Hero, some really big titles, and they all just came together to make this one studio. They are actually working currently on two games, but the only game which they have announced is the War Z. So it's not like a bunch of developers who've never made a AAA title in the past, it's just that of course the studio is brand new. The game is being published by Arctos Interactive Group who have only ever published one title before The War Z, which was The War Inc, and I will get into the name similarities in just a second. And this game was a free to play shooter which was released last year. You might be very curious about the name, since of course the game which they published is called The War Inc, and the game which Hammerpoint Interactive are working on is called The War Z. Not only do the two games share a very similar name, but they also actually use the same engine. That's right, the War Z uses the same engine as the War Inc. So if anyone wants to have a real feel of how the engine is and how it performs, then I'd highly recommend downloading that game since it is free to play. Hammerpoint Interactive have of course made some improvements on the engine, mainly the netcode, just of course so then you can pump out 250 players on one server without running into any issues. The actual game has been in development for just one year, but the ideas and basics of the whole concept have been around there for quite a few years now. You will actually notice a lot of the weapons and assets which are found in the War Inc. are also found in the War Z, which is somewhat weird, but since we are on somewhat limited of time span to make the game, it isn't that big of a deal anyway. What I of course mean by limited time span is that the game is planned to come out in the fall of this year, which is of course 2012, and the beta is planned actually for the end of summer, which is very soon to the time of making this video. You can of course go on the website if you do want to sign up for the beta, which I would highly recommend. So the actual game is going to be a one-off payment, there's no subscription and no DLC, all of the updates are apparently going to be free. They have actually stated on the website that they are completely avoiding the free to play model just so they don't fall into a trap a lot of newer games are falling into which is of course ending up making the game pay to win meaning the person with the most money is going to be the guy with the best weapons and all that kind of stuff because that of course is something you want to avoid for any game which is going to be lasting for a long period of time. There's currently only one map in the game which is named Colorado and you can assume from the name that it is of course based off of real location and this map is 400 square kilometers compared to Shinoris which is found in Daisy which is 255 square kilometers. They have stated that they have multiple maps planned which is going to be really awesome to increase the lifespan of the game. These of course like I said earlier will all come free of charge from that one off fee. Similar to DayZ, the War Z is going to have a persistent world, meaning things you do on that server are going to stay there forever, such as putting down barricades and all that kind of stuff. There isn't actually any confirmation of being able to put down things which you can do in DayZ, such as putting down barbed wire, but I'd imagine it would be something which would play a huge role in the game since it is very zombie survival-esque, you know, putting barricades on doors and those kind of things. It has been confirmed that you can have multiple characters on the War Z, which is something you do not find in DayZ, or at least for DayZ mods since you do need a completely new Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead account to play on different characters. This probably will change in the full standalone version, but right now it is something which it has to boast over the original DayZ mod. On top of that, all other characters will actually have stats such as experience, the amount of time they have survived, killed zombies, killed bandits, killed civilians, alignment and last map. Of course alignment is simply a kind of humanity system which is something you do find in DayZ. So you could become a bandit, you could become a good guy. And of course killed bandits and killed civilians are simply going to be the alignment of the people you killed. It's a pretty simple system but it is something really nice to add to the gameplay. Of course the menus and everything else are on alpha so the amount of information that is there could be increased or decreased by the final version of the game. 
So going back to a point just before, of course, there is XP in this game. I'd assume you'd get it from killing zombies, from killing humans. You'd probably get a lot more. And that can be used in a skill tree system, which obviously isn't going to have too big of an impact on the game, but is just going to give you a few personal choices, which are going to help you a bit in survival. You can also access your inventory out of the game, which is pretty useful, just in case you want to organise it or something like that. You've got two different modes to choose from when creating your character. You've got Hardcore, which is the same as DayZ, in that when you die, your character's dead, you do not respawn. And then there's, of course, Softcore, which means when you do die, you respawn. And these aren't going to be mixed on the same server, since that could cause some huge gameplay implications. So that's something really cool and gives, I guess, some casual gamers a bit more of a chance to survive for a longer period of time without getting annoyed. Looking at the character screen, it does look as if there will be a lot of customization for the characters as well. There are actually two different currencies in the game, which is very different to Daisy since there isn't actually any real currency in that game. And the currencies are dollars and gold coins. Both of these currencies are used to barter with other players at a general store, which I can assume is kind of similar to an auction house in another MMO. But it may have to be done in actual physical transactions rather than just placing it on some server and waiting for someone to buy it. There will of course be vehicles, you can see those in quite a few different screenshots, military vehicles and just normal civilian vehicles, but we're not quite sure right now on how many there's going to be, or if it's going to be helicopters and all that kind of stuff, but I can assume that there is definitely going to be quite a few vehicles in the game. They are of course going to be very scarce, similar to DayZ. You can see in quite a few screenshots massive cities, which is something you don't find in DayZ. By massive, of course, I mean cities with skyscrapers and all that kind of stuff. It has been confirmed in an interview that you are going to be able to go in a lot of these buildings, but not all of them. But since there is such a massive span of a city, it's not too big of a downside since the cities are so large, you wouldn't expect to be able to go in all of the buildings. But you can expect to be able to get in more than you can in the DayZ mod. But I do know this is actually something which is going to be changed for a full standalone version of DayZ anyway. So zombies work in a similar way to how you think they would. They've got very poor vision and they work mainly on their sound and smell. There are of course gameplay mechanics in place to prevent the zombies from smelling you and hearing you as much which is of course walking or using the silenced weapon and there is actually an item which you can use on yourself to stop the zombies from smelling you as well. I'm not quite sure what it is but it's something which could be pretty cool and could be a rare item which would be really useful. Like I said just a second ago, the zombies vision is extremely weak, which compared to DayZ is a huge difference, since the zombies can actually see you quite well as long as you are directly in front of them. Looking at actual zombie quantities, it does look as if the actual number of zombies on screen at any one time is much higher than DayZ, even when the zombies are idle. This gives the game a really cool ambient mood simply because of the number of zombies and the way they are really patrolling the area. In terms of story, there is actually going to be notes and diaries left around the world by NPCs, which I'm going to assume are going to be randomly generated, which are going to have hints for supplies, which is going to make the game really dynamic and a different experience each time. For example, you could find a guy with a dead note on him, and you don't know whether or not he's looted the place, so it is somewhat of a risk going all the way to a place in case there's nothing there. There is a backstory to the game and how it all happened, but the actual story as a whole will be made by the players of the game, similar to how DayZ does it. Players will also be able to create their own missions and quests for other players to solve and finish for a reward, which could be a really cool system if it is done well. And in theory would make the game have pretty much unlimited quests. Something as simple as kill player A whilst on a hardcore character would have a huge impact on the PvP and would be pretty awesome in my opinion. Grouping up in Warzy is a lot easier than on Daisy. It's not going to be as simple as spawning on a friend, which is something you might find in a game such as Battlefield. You are going to have to walk all the way to your friend, but you will actually be able to see your friend's location on a map, making it very easy to join games with your friends. On top of that, there is also a feature to group up with friends and then spawn in the same location. I'd assume this is only available from a fresh spawn rather than all grouping up and randomly teleporting to a place on the map, which I've never been to since that would make no sense. In terms of random events, you are going to find them on the War Z, but the only events which are confirmed right now are crashed helicopters. Of course, you're not going to see the helicopter fly from the sky and crash into the floor. It's simply going to be something which is spawned as soon as the server goes up. This is something you find in Daisy as well, but it's still something really cool which adds to the gameplay, like I said earlier. And on top of that, the other event which is confirmed is abandoned military camps, which is going to have a lot of loot, some medical supplies, all that kind of stuff, which again, like I said, just adds a whole new level to gameplay. It really makes it a different experience each time. I can only assume that these are going to be a bit more spread out than they are in Daisy, since the only event in Daisy is the helicopters, and you would normally find all of those between Story and the airfield. 
Since the map is so much bigger in Chinaros, I'd assume these events are a lot more rare than they are on DayZ, so that should be really awesome when coming across one out of the blue. In terms of renting servers for the game, it is actually quite cheap when compared to DayZ, and it looks pretty easy, it's all done within the actual game UI. You've got two choices, you can either make the server private or public. Which is going to be a bit weird if you are playing on a hardcore character, but of course it does make it a lot easier to play with friends. It's a bit of a weird feature I guess, but we'll just have to see how it ends up in the end. Like I said earlier, of course the minimum is 70 and the maximum is 250, and this looks like it could be the main revenue source of the game, since of course this is all done straight through Hammerpoint Interactive, without any third party game hosting or anything like that. Like I said earlier, the game is planned for a release of Fall 2012 and the beta is planned for the end of summer in 2012, which is very soon from now. I will have a link to the official website in the description below if you do want to go check that out since it does have a bit more information if you are willing to read into it, if you are interested in it, and you can also sign up for the actual War Z beta there, which like I said earlier, I highly recommend you do before it's too late. I won't be linking this in the description, but I would highly recommend checking out their Facebook page since that is a place which you are going to find a lot of the pictures before anyone else. They are released on the forums as well, but obviously a bit later than if you are to get them straight from a Facebook page, so I highly recommend checking out that if you haven't already. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope it hasn't been too long and too in-depth. It's simply a little look at the game. Of course, there's a lot more information on the website, on the forums, on the Facebook page, on the Twitter. There has been some interviews with the devs and all that kind of stuff. So just go search for that stuff if you do want to look into it a bit more. But thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and all that kind of stuff if you want me to do some more coverage on the War Z. I will list a few of the key features of the game in the description below if you do want to go check out those. Feel free to leave some feedback on the game as a whole, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you think it's going to be better than Daisy, all that kind of stuff, just anything really. I've compiled all of the screenshots which are currently released for the War Z and put them on this video, so if you were only listening to my voice, I would highly recommend putting the video in full screen, putting it in 720p, and just quickly look through all of the images, since they do actually contain a lot of information which I haven't went into, since like I said earlier, I just want a basic overview of the game rather than going into every single detail. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time.